racist. <laughs> Are you? I don't care. Welcome back to Podcast the Hero. <laughs> One of us really cares about existing. The other one of us could give a shit. Yeah, Fritzy doesn't care if I exist. I don't. I care if I exist. Of course. Because I really like being. Yeah. So we watched a show. But before we talk about that show, I want to say, I want to talk about our sponsor. You do? You ever get a fucking... You ever look down in the turlet after you've had a little poop and see a couple corn nuggets looking back at you and wonder, wow, that doesn't digest very well. <laughs> That's just like our sponsor today, the corn bot. He goes into the discord and if you ask him a question, he's probably got an answer. Designed by Zach, the corn man himself. It's an incredible thing. And that's it. it. Um, what if those what if those little corns in the turlet all of a sudden sprouted little mechanical arms and legs? I wouldn't like that. <laughs> you wouldn't. Yeah, would that freak you out? My friend Chris was once saying he was like, no matter how well I chew my corn, it always shows up whole. Why is that? And I'm like, well, it's not showing up whole. It's it's all chewed up and shit. It, you're just seeing little. Yellow bits. It's, it's, you're not seeing full kernels of corn. You add full, f- <laughs> full ears of corn. Yeah. Are you, are you? Is there something wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, there probably is. Well, no, but I mean, I, sometimes like, like if you eat like a chili, like this is not really a chili, but like a soup that has mm-hmm. corn kernels in it. Sure, you don't chew those very well. You're not chewing those. Those are just coming right out the other end, full, whole corns. Because you don't chew soup. No. It would be weird if you chewed soup. I'm going to try If you have to chew the soup, soup. does that mean it's more of a stew? Probably. If your soup is so thick. Well, you know what? Chicken noodle soup. (laughs) You chew the noodles, don't you? I just... I guess Whole you do slurp right them. down the gullet. I made some chicken noodle soup from scratch the other day, like homemade chicken noodle soup, and it had like those kind of bow tie pastas in it. Yeah. There was actually very few, little liquid. There wasn't very much liquid to it. <laughs> it, it was more of a stew. It, but, was. Uh, it was. It was just a pasta dish. It was pretty good. <laughs> um, this podcast is also brought to you by our patrons on Patreon. Mm-hmm. And if you'd like uh, to be one of those patrons, go to yeah. patreon.com slash podcast the hero. Look at that. I'm a fucking you nailed pro, it. dude. I'm a pro. Fucking pro. Uh, source the odd. Mm. Uh, uh, Rob the anti-human. Oh, Rob. Love him to pieces. Josh. Peggy Thrill. Green Street. Davey. And my actual, and my actual mom signed up. Five. Yes, uh, a common thread, Evan, Zane, Rody loves my dink. And I do. Robert, Worf's parenting skills. Oh, on Alexander Ruzhenko. Yeah. Deconomist, Mushy, uh, Zach, Kane, the first Dan, KH Pandas, uh, Cornman, Jeff, I should say Jeffrey, he has it as Jeffrey. Uh, yeah, Mason, TBJ, on. Anthony, Yuri, Nick, Fruit, Punch, Samurai, Ashwin, and High Tops. And I should say, Ashwin is the is, one who recommended this yeah. in the Patreon. Mm-hmm. So, so take that, Patreon, take that all the way to the bank, because you can recommend things and we'll do them. Yeah. Within reason. Yeah, we're not going to take we're not a gonna life. do like weird stuff. We're not going to do like foot stuff. Well, we'll do foot stuff. We've We're only not done do foot stuff l- once. Yeah, well. <laughs> and I actually threw away the couch that you did your foot stuff on. Did you? Yeah. Just because of that? Oh, yes. Did you have to refloor your entire house? No, but I had to vacuum. Ugh. Yeah, I my feet do shed was, a lot. No, the my feet couch just itself shed was shedding. So I got rid of it. Skin all over the place. I have like really flaky feet. Yeah, that's disgusting. (laughs) 
So what did we watch? We watched uh, Tales from the Crypt, the very first episode. Do, now, I feel like our younger viewers slash listeners have no idea what Tales from the Crypt is. You know what? I didn't have a very good idea of what it was either. I had watched some of the movies that were branded Tales from the Crypt. Yeah. I was a big fan of the cartoon. I was aware of the comic books. I don't know that I fully realized it was like a live action TV show from the 80s. Yeah. And um, it was uh, uh, on HBO. Mm -hmm. It had to be. Yeah. (laughs) And in the 80s and early 90s. Uh, this show was like, uh, I feel like this was like the most metal show, this and like Headbangers Ball on MTV. What about that was cartoon like the most, Heavy Metal? Was that out at that point? I don't know. I've never seen it. I've just seen oh. the pictures. It looks pretty <laughs> heavy metal. But like this, um, and also like boobs. Mm hmm. That's when I was watching it. Like, I was like, okay, so this was a TV show. And then at one point, the guy in it used the word pussy. Yeah. And I was like, it's wild Whoa. that they're <laughs> saying the word pussy in this, like yeah. on a TV show. And then all of a sudden, it was like, fuck this, fuck that, shit, shit, shit. And I was like, okay, so. I don't know where they aired this. And then (laughs) there was fucking boobies flying around. And I was like, it's got to be fucking HBO or something like that. Because this is wackadoo, dude. And um, it was this and Red Shoe Diaries. If you were HBO subscribers, that was like, uh, mom and dad already went to bed and I'm staying up late to watch something and oh it's uh, past 11 o'clock on HBO I wonder if Red Shoe Diaries is on or Real Sex mm. now in Canada it was we didn't have HBO oh. uh, but we had a channel that would play HBO stuff it's on my finger <laughs> what did little, you do it's a little dinner um, <laughs> Good and that, soup on that channel paper. was called Showcase. I don't know, like, what they played. I remember they played the show Oz. They definitely played Red Shoe Diaries, and it was yeah. a very similar sort of thing where you're going, like, or being young and, like, putting on Red Shoe Diaries and being like, I might see a titty, yeah. um, but unfortunately, I have to sit through the Red Shoe Diaries in Which order to do it. Terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it was that there was also like Cinemax at night, uh, yeah. late at night, uh, you know, the, the famous Skinemax cause they would mm. always play like the, the B like sort of B movie. Uh, uh, I mean, I, it's not quite soft porn, but it's like basically just a lot of boobs. I mean, how could it not be soft porn? Like, I guess what it is. is soft porn? Like, yeah. there's no penetration. Yeah, like, it's just it. kissing with their boobs out? Yeah, it's basically that. Like, I feel yeah, like the no, further no. we get away from softcore porn's, like, existence, the more I forget what it was. Yeah, basically just was no wieners. You showed choochies? No, none of that. Like, no no below-the-waist stuff. But they did yeah. show, like, people in the act of doing things to each yeah. other. They just, like, didn't show any of the stuff. Like, zero penetration. Yeah, zero any of that, yeah. who's wa- Who was watching that? Like, I who? Was. Are you kidding <laughs> I mean, me? I was 12 years old. Yeah, children. Okay, children. Yep, exactly <laughs> like, who it's intended for. Children. <laughs> that is probably who it's intended for. Like, can you imagine being a... An adult being like, well, I don't want to see any penetration. <laughs> it's the near uh, beer of adult films. Yeah, just like, <laughs> th- that is for kids that have yeah, stumbled it's upon it. It's 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 it made just to get kids into it so that, that when they see the, the, the real stuff, the triple X mm. stuff, that they're well prepared for it. Yeah, it's like... Uh, you know, they're it, like training just wheels. like weaning them on to yeah. 
<laughs> the hardcore stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Start the addiction early. It's like That's smoking. Ridiculous, dude. Um, so we watched this episode, Tales from the Crypt. Yeah, the very first uh, episode. The very first one. It's called uh, The Man Who Was Death. Mm-hmm. Now, for people who haven't seen it, the show is a lot like sort of the old Saturday afternoon matinees that they used to do, like where it was like, uh, like Vampire Bill would introduce the the Saturday afternoon matinee on TV, and it like you'd have this little introduction thing with a a guy talking about it, and in this case, it's the Crypt Keeper is your mm-hmm. host for every episode. And, and he awesome. starts and ends every episode. Yeah. And a but Crypt like Keeper him. is, he's a skeleton guy. He's not a skeleton. Kinda. He's a corpse. Okay. Same diff. Uh, he's a skeleton with a little bit of skin left on him. <laughs> yeah, he's just he's a dead guy. Gross. He's also like fucking, like two feet tall. Yeah, he's animatronic. Is he? Yeah. Is he animatronic? Okay. I think so. Or a puppeted. He's a puppet yeah. of some kind. At the end of the episode, he flat out has human arms. Well, that's fun. <laughs> like someone just had their arms out, just going like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, he kept pulling that lever. Yeah, we'll exactly. We'll get to that, though. We'll get to that. Um, so the man who's death, first of all, uh, the Crypt Keeper is sitting next to a bug zapper for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, and it's zapping the mosquitoes or whatever, yeah, or the yeah. flies. And he gets really bummed out that his, <laughs> it's, I mean, presumably it's his bug zapper, right? Yeah. Like it's I mean, in his thing. Like he's hanging out in his little in throne. His crypt. Yeah. And he's got a bug zapper, and then he's getting real sad about zapping all the bugs, because he's like, I remember when they were cute little maggots. It's like, then so why do you flies. have the thing? Um, uh, so he introduces the episode, and the music starts, and it is fucked. It's like a fucked up country version of circus music. <laughs> That's a good description for it. Um, and then I noticed that it was all the music for that episode was done by Rye Cooter, who has the silliest name. Yeah, it's really close to Dry Cooter. Right. Cooter is a that's a not a a good word. It just means uh woman's genitals, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, just like, it's like a, I don't know. It's It's cute. It feels crass. Oh no, my little cooter. (laughs) I got peanut butter in my little cooter. So Rye Cooter was named by Rolling Stone in 2003, the Mm -hmm. eighth best guitar player of all time. What? Uh, Gibson in 2011 named him the 32nd best guitar player of all time. He has won six Grammy Awards. <laughs> he has played with Neil Young, the Monkees, the Rolling Stones, the Doobie Brothers, Eric Clapton, John Lee Hooker. Hooker and Cooter. Hooker and Cooter. Um, so he's like a session guy. Um, he was a session guy for a long time, but he also was like, uh, had a bunch of solo records and stuff. He's very, uh, well known for slide guitar, apparently. Okay. Um, and it was a name I recognized when I was watching the the opening credits and I was like, wait a minute, right? Cooter? Is that the guy I'm thinking of? And I looked him up and I was like, how the fuck did this show get like a six time Grammy award winner? To fucking write the music for it. You were thinking, wait, I've seen a dry cooter before. (laughs) Every single one. I don't know if that says something about them or something about me. Um, It's them, Fritzy. (laughs) Oh, Fritzy couldn't turn you on. (laughs) You're the problem. (laughs) Um, Executive producers... 
of this series, Richard Donner, Mm -hmm. uh, Twilight Zone, Superman, The Omen, The Goonies, The Toy, Lethal Weapon, Scrooged. Great movie. Yeah. This dude made a bunch of great flicks. The best stuff from the 80s. Yeah, for sure. And then Robert Zemeckis. Yeah. Like, come right on. back to the future, Roger Rabbit, Forrest Gump. Like Robert Robert Zemeckis has made a ton of fucking stuff. I feel like he's involved with like the Ghostbusters. Yeah. Like all and that fucking shit. Home Alone, I want to say. Probably. But I'm just making stuff up though. But probably. But I, just, I feel like it's true. Yeah. I feel Does like Richard count? Donner and Robert Zemeckis had their hands in just about everything during that time. Yeah. Um, so right off the bat, you know, this is sort of, there is a lot behind this series. Mm -hmm. Um, you're introduced to the main character, uh, who has got this great sort of Southern accent. Um, and then it sort of, you hear his voice before you see his face, but you know who he is. You know, because you know the voice, and then you see his face, and you go, yes, that guy. And You you don't know his name, but he's been in everything that you've ever fucking seen. Right. And um, and then when you see him, and you go, wait, 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 I know. He's the one dude from Shawshank Redemption. Yeah. Right? He's also been in, like, Deep Space Nine, and Mm -hmm. he was Death- in Bill and Ted's Bill and Bogus Ted. Journey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, who I think also, like, Donner and Zemeckis had a big part of Bill and Ted. Bill and Ted. Um, so the actor's name is William Sadler. If you don't know him, look him up, and you'll see his face, and you go, oh, yeah, I know exactly who you're talking <laughs> yeah. about. Yeah. I've seen this guy play small roles in everything I love. Yes, exactly. <clears throat> um, this is the first and, time I've ever seen him, I think, as, a, like, a main character. Yeah. And he's fantastic. Yeah, he's great. I, I don't know why he doesn't, he w- isn't in more stuff as the main character. Um, and the first thing, so he's talking about his job. And he is the executioner in the state of Arkansas. And they're about to put somebody to death. Uh, who sh- The guy shot his boss and accidentally shot one of the secretaries. Mm -hmm. Um, The thing that that made me think of was we generally don't call people secretaries anymore. Um, They're either receptionists or uh, administrative assistants or whatever. Right. So that got me thinking about the, the cabinet of the president. Um, Like the secretary of defense Secretary of State, those types of roles in the U.S. government. And I wonder, should we start calling them the Administrative Assistant of State, Administrative Assistant of Defense? <laughs> um, uh, long reach for a, for a pretty good joke. Yeah, well, there you go. Uh, I'm, <laughs> all I'm saying is I took the note because that's what happened in my brain. Um, so he, they're going to execute this guy. And uh, the big thing is uh, crapping your pants. Mm-hmm. Right? They're going to put this guy in the electric chair, and he talks about not wanting to crap your pants, but everybody craps their pants. Yeah. Can I say, before we get too deep here, I watched it with Cage. Oh, no. And when I got to the end, I was like, mm-hmm. she was like, so what did you think? And I was like, nothing. <laughs> and she was like, she had amazing thoughts. She Lots did? of them. Yeah. Um, she very much enjoyed it. I liked it as well, but like also like at the end I was like, yep, good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and she was like, well, let's think about this and had like amazing points. And thus anything even remotely intelligent I have to say about this beyond just the description of what happened <laughs> is just me echoing something that Caitlin has said. Okay. That's okay. fair. I will do my best to credit her throughout here. However, should I accidentally say something somewhat uh, intelligent? 
and not credit her? Just know <laughs> that it is not my original idea. Um, it's very early on that we find out that uh, the the main character, his name is uh, Luther Vandross, I, I believe. No, Niles. All oh, right, that's right. Niles is his name. He is twisted. He's this twisted, is a twisted yeah. dude. Um, he says, you know, a lot of guys in this job don't want to look the inmate in the eye mm-hmm. before they do it. I love it. it. Might, it might spook them or something yeah. like that. He likes, and then it shows him it. doing it, and he gives him a, like a good hard look yeah. before he dies, and it's like, yeah. And okay. he says, then he says, um, the uh, the uh, whatever they always they, they say. Mm-hmm. That uh, the that the inmate doesn't feel it, right? It happens yeah. so fast, going fries through your brain, brain, and like yeah, so quickly that you don't feel it. And then he says, "I hate to, I hate to think that they don't feel a thing. I hate to yeah. think that." Like mm-hmm. that's a pretty fucked up outlook. He's about justice, baby. Yeah, he is really. He also mentions that he's like. They always come in screaming that the governor's going to call, but not once in 12 years yep. has the governor called. Yeah. And he's like, like they I all think they're going to get a reprieve and just wait a few more seconds and it'll he's be like, okay. I know the and, governor's not going to call from experience. Yeah. So <clears throat> the next thing we know, he's sitting in front of the warden at the prison uh, and he's getting laid off. The yeah. uh, the legislature. Well, in he's Arkansas. at the bar and he hears a newscaster being like, "They've oh. pushed through some new legislation yeah. that's saying that execution is no longer going to be yeah. fucking a thing in this state that we're yeah. in, whatever state it is." I don't yeah. know. Fuck that. Yeah, and then the legislation passes and he's out of a job. Yeah, and he's like, "Well, and can he's I like, have well, I could just do yeah." My old he job. says like. Just do something else here or whatever. And they're like, no, we got someone else. They think the prisoners fucking wouldn't really like having you around. Which right. is, yeah. I think, kind of fair. True. I right. love it. I'm Wonderful sound that. effect. Egg all the time. <laughs> it signifies nothing. <laughs> so, now he is at the bar. Back at the bar, talking He's with his good bar. pal bartender who yep. also seems like a fucking perv yes uh who is also in bogus journey and deep space nine. Oh, he is he is uh his name the actor's name is roy brocksmith um and is another one of those guys that when you see him you go i've seen that guy in a lot of things i didn't recognize he's just a that. character actor guy um <clears throat> and uh and niles is talking about that they should televise ex- uh, executions. Mm-hmm. The best ratings in the world. And they are both convinced that uh, it would be a much better deterrent. It already yeah. is a deterrent, but it would be m- even better if everybody had to see these people get fried. Yeah. And he's like, everybody would love it. Dude. Yeah. He's like, the other networks would just start killing people just to compete. Yeah. And it's true. He's 100% right. Is if he? they started showing executions on television, it would be the highest rated thing on TV. Because humanity, and I don't know why, but humanity has a sick sort of fetish um, with death. And sex. Sex and death? Sex and death. Um, I feel said. like especially in America, in the U.S., we have like a, we have a, a, a large population of people who just like really fetishize the death of other people, like mm, I, in I violent really think, ways. I think like, that not just death, death is but like fetishized everywhere. Yeah. Um, like I think it's part of the human condition. It's the re it's the reason why horror exists. Yeah. But right? like I so feel like there are like, like there are these people 
there's these there's i mean and i'm they're probably everywhere that just like you feel like they are like man i wish somebody would break into my house so i could kill them that's true you know what i mean i I feel like that would be a more common sentiment shared amongst the world if we had loose gun laws universally (laughs) Yeah. You know, like, but that's very a very American thing. You have a lot of people who are just like, I dare you. I dare these people to come in. Yeah. I'll shoot them. I'll kill them. Yeah. Just you know, a lot of people who like to like play army or play cop, like to dress up in military. That's why gear, militias exist. Carry <laughs> weapons around. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, uh, so then for some reason, he's in a courtroom hanging out yeah it flips around you know what they're 20 minute episodes so it's got to flip around a little quick yeah and i thought it did a very good job of telling a complete story very quickly though at times it was a little jarring because it had to flip around a bit uh so he's in the courtroom uh on a murder trial of a guy a biker Mm -hmm. um who is freed on a technicality and I got to say, he's not a very handsome man. No. Um, they picked a really good actor for it. Uh, Mimi Kennedy, um, who Kennedy you would was? know. She's an actress. You'd know her oh. from the television program Mom with Anna Faris. Um, she was also in one of my all-time favorite movies, Pump Up the Volume with Christian Slater. Ten things Slater. I hate about you. Huh? Nothing. P- <laughs> what? <laughs> Was it, is she the mom in mom? No, she's the, um, she's like the AA sponsor lady. I've never seen that show. I saw commercials for it. It looked fucking unwatchable. Yeah, it's rough. Yeah. Um, she spits on him because he killed her brother. Mm. And then he He uses a, uh, a a, a homophobic slur, Mm -hmm. which I was, that's, uh, super jarring in today's world yeah but like in the 80s and 90s yeah. i feel like you could say that on tv and like yeah. people just be like yep yeah and it's like it is now it is incredibly jarring i think at the time it might have been yeah so at the popular time this was made jargon that no it big wasn't deal. You know, like, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that it wasn't bad because it's always been the same level of bad, bad. which is like unacceptable, but it was fucking more accepted by your general, general population at that point to just be like, yep, that's just a word they say it means gay, but it's like, it means so much worse than gay. It's a fucking hate term. Yeah. So then Niles goes sort of on a, a rant. Mm-hmm. About uh, big city lawyers and computers and time clocks. Yeah. Like the time clocks are like the super modern thing. That's right. Um, sort of pining for the good old days. Despite the fact that he's like, I'm a country boy, but I do well, I love, love the city. The city. <laughs> Which is like a yeah, hilarious thing. Weird. Cage had an excellent observation. Um, you know, we're obviously going into the part where he is going to seek vigilante justice. It yes. becomes just pretty clear at this point. Right. Um, and it's done in a very noir style. You yes. know what I'm saying? Yes. Uh, he's Batman, dude. Like, kind of not. He is Batman. But it's like Batman is widely viewed as a good thing. Whereas, like, right from the outset, you do not like this guy. Yeah. Because he's a fucking pervert for justice. Yeah. And so is Batman. Yeah. Batman sucks. Oh, Batman is, uh, he is a pervert, (laughs) a pervert for justice. (laughs) That's a good way to explain him. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, he's, um, he's not a good dude. (laughs) No. Um, he, uh, so the way he sets up his vigilanteism in this case is pretty clever. Mm Mm-hmm. Right. So he knows where this guy is going to go back to his biker gang lair. Yeah. Uh, And there's a big metal fence that he's got to open. He's got to unlock it and open it up. And uh, it's a big gate. And so he electrifies the gate. Yeah. 
The guy goes to stick his key in the lock and right zap, and he kills the dude. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then he sees it on the news. Yep, and he's like, "That's sweet." Yeah, I mean, he doesn't have like a wild reaction to it or nothing like no. that. There's no time, but you know, he's, he's feeling good. Getting his, he's getting his jollies. Yeah, he's uh. His tight pants got a little tighter. Yeah. In the front. <laughs> um, and then we go back to another courtroom. Mm-hmm. And we've got a, a couple who are sitting yeah. on, at the defendant's table. And they are acquitted uh, of the murder of the guy's former wife. Yes. Um. And the deal was he had killed her to get her money and then run off with the the hot younger babe. But, like, they don't say that no. right off the hop. It's just implied. They yep. get away with it for whatever reason, and the reason is not yep. implicitly stated. Uh, but he knows better because he's justice, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, <clears throat> and, and he is always... Um, He's prepared ahead of time. Yeah. Right? He's horny. He's horny for justice. Yeah. So, like, he knew that biker guy was going to be, that James Flood, the biker guy, was going to go to this place, and he had it all rigged up, ready to go. Mm -hmm. And in the case of uh, this Carney fella, uh, he knew he was going uh, with his lady to the hot tub. Well, what do you do after a huge court win after you murder someone and got away with it? With yeah, your... you go get some champagne, get naked in a hot tub. That's right. And uh, he's got weird he's underwater got it all sex up. and probably get an infection of yeah. some kind. Hot tubs are just full of bromine, horrible <laughs> bacteria. It's gross. It is. Do you guys have hot tub gardens in Canada? Fucking excuse me. Hot tub gardens. It's like a, they're like a place you can go and rent a hot tub by the hour. You get your own private room with a hot tub in it for an hour. Anything you can rent by the hour is for sex. Yeah, it is. I know. And so I can't imagine that anyone like that can't be clean. No, of course not. So why would you go in there? It's real gross. We don't have those in Canada. We have But so they're in their hot tub. They're fucking (laughs) drinking their champagne, getting ready to spill their juices. Yeah. And a dude steps out of the shadows. Yeah. And they're immediately, like, terrified. Well, yeah. But, I mean, I guess they would be. Like, they're probably in his house. They're indoors for some reason. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know. How many indoor fucking hot tubs do you see? But well, he's super he's rich. He got all his ex-wife's money. True. And uh, they <laughs> fucking, they're like, ah, I've got 200 bucks and don't hurt us. And he's like, I don't want your money. And then all of a sudden, she starts confessing. Yeah. Right? And she's like, you know, I didn't want to do it. I didn't think he was actually going to do it. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Then he kills him. How's he yeah. killed him? He throws he just something a, in the hot tub. He hits like a little, no, he hits a little remote oh. control that he's got in his hand. So he had had this rigged up ahead of time. Yeah. And uh, it zapped him to death. That seems overkill. Like yeah. he went through all, like he probably had to empty the hot tub yep. to rig it up. <laughs> if I could refill it up, put the chemicals in, get it balanced, balance yeah, the it, pH balance balance. chemicals. And then. Like, he could have just thrown a fucking toaster in there or something, you know? Like, right. Well, that's what know. I was I was watching going, like, how is he going to do this? Is he going to, like, throw a toaster in there, literally? Like, what is he going to do? And then he just pulls out this little thing and goes, yeah, doink! Yeah. And they went, you know what? Like, it was, I actually found her acting in that, her dying acting, where she was, like, her face was, like, almost covered by the water, and she was, like, acting like she was getting fucking yeah. electrocuted. I thought that was extremely effective acting it just did me actually yeah well good um good (laughs) i'm glad that you enjoyed it 
I didn't say that. You did. You said it was awesome watching this woman die, and it. Uh, I it, said so, it, it was so realistic. Genuinely disturbed me a little. It was so little. realistic that it like it <laughs> it pushed every wonderful button in my dark, dirty heart. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> then I don't know why, but he's now in the strip club. So the, here's a thing that you miss. Okay. Like, Cage and I rewound. Because there is a little fucking newspaper on the ground and he steps on it and it's like flashed, but you got to read the headline and it's like, go-go dancer uh, gets acquitted on murder of some fucking oh. thing. Right? So it's like another person that yeah. has been found innocent. Yeah. But it's like really quick and there's also some headline about a punk show on there, which... <laughs> Cage and I both found very distracting. Like, we were just like, what did that thing say? <laughs> but we rewound a couple of times because all of a sudden he's in the strip club, right? Yeah. And you're like, what's he doing? Like, where's the fucking context? Yeah. It was on that newspaper. Okay, good. It was very quick. Um, This is the point where I'm, I'm oh, by the way, I was watching this on YouTube. Me, no, I, myself as well. And then, and then there were strippers and they were topless. Mm-hmm. And I went. And boobies, boobies were different in the eighties. Yeah, for sure. They were just more natural. Yeah. Also, like uh, the like the hair. shapes of bras probably were different. Yeah, and that you know, you know what? Yeah. Everyone's beautiful, and their bodies are their business. Yeah, I'm all pro. I'm pro everybody. I'm pro every booby. Yeah, me I too. Think. They're all great. Um, I like your boobies. Yeah, mine are awesome. I like my boobies. <laughs> the, uh, the though, I thought at the at the time, I went. I don't think you're supposed to show boobs on YouTube. And oh, then that's I thought, true. And then I thought, are we obligated to report this? If you. <laughs> If anyone out there listening to this even fucking thinks for a second about reporting that, I have a young son with unfettered access to YouTube, and even that, I will not consider for a second. This is art. It's art. (laughs) Don't deprive the world of it, you fucking masochists. So he's explaining... At this point, he's in the strip club and he's explaining that he's going to kill the go-go dancer. And they sort of pan the camera up towards the... Um, she's dancing in a cage. In the, the suspended cage that she's yeah. dancing in. And I'm looking at this and I'm like, is no one noticing all the jumper cables attached to this cage? Yeah, it would have been really easy to wire up for sure. Yeah, that and, one. and also very obvious. Yeah. Um, like when she got in the cage, did she not notice that there were jumper cables hooked up to this thing? It's a dark nightclub. There's a bunch of boobies flip flowing around. Your attention is otherwhere. 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 (laughs) (laughs) And then as he's going to hit the little plunger. Or the Nothing little happens. thingy to zap uh, the go-go dancer doesn't work. Yeah, to Frank zap the go-go dancer. Well, he said, what the? And then the again. feds come right in and catch yeah. him. The guy, that he, the guy that fires him yeah. is leading the charge for some reason. Yeah, and they get him. And they then I go, him. oh, I guess somebody did notice the mm-hmm. jumper cables. <laughs> somebody called yeah. the cops like, hey. True. Somebody rigged up jumper cables to this thing. I yeah. think it might be dangerous. And so they get him. And he's arrested. And then. He's arrested. And then, of course, the timing is just perfect. Because the state the legislation has, has been overturned. Yeah. yeah. Reinstated the death penalty. Just in time. Here's the most unrealistic uh, part of this show. Uh, how quickly the government works. Yeah. Like, no way. Right. No way does the government work that quickly to be like, you guys don't like the death penalty? It's gone. Wait, Wait you want it back? Okay. You love it? It's back. <laughs> like, the government just doesn't work that quickly. Nope. Ever. Nope. In any country, ever. Nope. 
Nope. The and, wheels uh, of bureaucracy grind society to a halt. And then you get the the sort of the irony of the episode, right? Which is mm. uh, the beginning of the episode. He says, oh, they're all the same when they're coming to me, yeah. right? The governor's going to call. They they shouldn't be here. Uh, they're all the same. It's always the same. Mm-hmm. And he sort of makes himself out to be different and above that yeah. the whole time. Well, because he's just. As he's getting his little perp walk down to the electric chair, he's crying that the governor's going to call and you know, that he shouldn't be there. You guys know me. You know me. And yeah. I'm different. I'm yeah. not like them. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, yeah, he gets, uh, they, they execute they him. They toast him. And they give him the double zap. Yep. Um, so. So there, that's, yeah, you get the irony of the whole thing. Now, the interesting thing, another point by Cage, mm-hmm. um, you know, when they're talking and he's like, if you put executions on TV, the whole world would watch and they'd love it. They also prove that in the episode, right? Like, it's like, um, like when they, when that was said, I was like, bullshit, like no fucking way. Like that's way too macabre. Like, I don't know. It wouldn't be that well watched, but then every execution that is shown, whether in the fucking chair or otherwise Mm -hmm. is shown completely from start to finish. Like no looking away. It shows you those horrifying moments where people beg for their lives and stuff like that. And they show it in its entirety and you sit there and you watch it. Yeah. And despite the fact that you may have been thinking that's not true, you sit there and you watch the whole thing. Yeah. Right. And it's It's like (laughs) incredibly insightful of her. She's insightful. Yeah. Um, I, I noted that, um, uh, in my personal opinion, uh, there should never be like the government should not be in the business of executing people. Well, no, we shouldn't be doing it. It's not a deterrent. Uh, if it were a deterrent, it would have deterred something and it doesn't. Um, yeah. and we need to just stop that nonsense. Um, yeah. Have you not stopped that nonsense? Oh, no, we have the death penalty all over the place here. My God. It's everywhere, man. Including the federal government. Well, a lot of people believe that uh, their tax dollars shouldn't be paid to house criminals that do horrible things. But on average, uh, executing people is actually a lot more expensive. Oh, yeah. It comes right out of your tax dollars. So, (laughs) yeah, it just goes back to that weird fetish that people have with death and that like you see somebody commit a crime and you think it's so heinous that you then think that that person who committed the crime also deserves to die. And I, I don't think that's the case. Uh, Can I read something that cage Mm -hmm. texted me today? Yeah. Whoever fights monsters should see to it. That in the process, he does not become a monster. And if you gaze long enough into an abyss, the abyss will gaze back into you. That is true. Who said that? Who said that? That was RF. Be careful what you're looking at, because it might be looking. Uh, No, it was (laughs) Frederick Nietzsche. (laughs) Well, that's, I mean. And very much applicable to uh, this specific episode. But also specific to certain current events that are happening in the world right now. Sure, of course. It's widely applicable. I feel like I could do the Crypt Keeper's laugh. Can you? I don't know. I've never tried. Try try it now. (laughs) You pretty much nailed it. That's pretty dead on. This whole time we've been talking about it, I was like, I think I can do that. I think I can Um, approximate it. My question for, for you is at the end of the episode, mm-hmm. uh, as the Crypt Keeper is wrapping this thing up, he's sitting in an electric chair yeah. and he's pulling the lever himself on himself. <laughs> Electrocuting yeah. himself over right? and over again. Electrocuting yeah. himself. And he gets to the point where it's not like he's like, 
already dead, so there's no impact, which I think is what they initially were getting at. But mm. right at the very end, he's like coughing and like, <laughs> like there is, it's clearly having an impact on him. Yeah. Yeah. So why does he keep doing it? I think he loves it. Yeah. He's weird. I think he's kind of being like the executioner himself and yeah. just being like, I fucking love this shit, dude. Um, I have a trivia game for you. Oh, based on uh, this nice. show. I feel like this is going to be a really succinct episode where we don't travel too far from the topic no. and uh, we get it done in excellent time. The normal amount of time. Yeah. Um, okay, question one. Which of these films was mm-hmm. not originally planned to be a Tales of the Crypt film? We got four movies. Okay. Which one wasn't planned to be a Tales from the Crypt film. A, okay, Death Becomes Her. B, The Frighteners. The Frighteners was. C, From Dusk Till Dawn. From Dusk Till Dawn was. D, Bordello of Blood. Bordello of Blood is. So, I guess it's A? It is Death A, becomes Death Becomes Her. There's another film made by Robert Zemeckis. So, oh my God. And um, he was producing Tales from the Crypt at the time, and so drew a lot of inspiration from that work, but it is not related to Tales from the Crypt. And was never intended to be. No. Uh, which famous animatronics eyes were used for the Crypt Keeper's eyes? Oh, let me think, let me think, let me think, let me think. Fuck, give me the, give me the options. Okay, was it A, Yoda? B, Chucky. Yes. C, Gizmo. It was Chucky. D, E.T. It was Chucky. It was Chucky. Yeah. They took the eyes out of Chucky. Yeah. Creepy. Put him in the Crip Keeper. Uh, which of these famous actors did not direct an episode of Tales from the Crypt? I know where you got your questions from. You do? Yes. Michael yeah, J. Fox? Trivia. Arnold Schwarzenegger, Tom Hanks, or Tom Cruise? Tom Cruise. It is Tom Cruise. You know all these answers because you've seen all these questions. Because you, you know, what? I went. I on, didn't go all the way. Th- you. I didn't go all the way through the IMDb trivia and looked at all the trivia. <laughs> I love the trivia. I it's love so it. Good. I look at it for everything that I watch, but I didn't go all the way through it. So maybe you didn't I get got... to this one, which is which two James Bonds? <gasps> Daniel Craig and. The other one. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say. Remember. You you don't know. It was Timothy Dalton was, was the other one. Ah shoot! I had all the James Bonds: Sean Connery, Roger Moore, George Lazenby, Timothy Dalton, Pierce Brosnan, and Daniel Craig. I'm not sure James I've ever Bonds. seen a James Bond movie. What? Yeah. Really? I'm not. Never in its entirety, for sure. I've seen. A piece of the Daniel Craig one where he's getting, he's in a bottomless chair and some guy's whipping him in the balls Oh, or yeah, something. that sucks. I've seen little bits of uh, the one with Pierce Brosnan, but I don't know if I can remember any of it. They're fun. Saw, saw all the Awesome Powers movies. Yeah. Well, then same you've day. seen, uh, then you don't need to watch any yeah. of the Bond movies. It's basically the same thing. Uh, I have a gift to throw into our chat here. Oh, I have a gift as well. Okay. It's hand drawn. Oh boy. I'm a little scared. I drew it while we were talking before the show. (laughs) Wait, wait, hold on. (laughs) Stop. Shut up. I don't want, why is this doing this? Fuck. Sorry. I don't want to see your stupid gift. It's a hand drawn book and frets. Why is he saying woof? Live, love, bark. Why is he saying those things? This is my special notepad. Oh. <laughs> I have had it forever. I like a spook of Fritz. Yeah, that's uh, sorry. I, I was trying to write a spook of Fritz theme song today, and it just <laughs> didn't turn out. <laughs> I wasted my day. Um. Okay. It's uh, this. This and this. Um, 
I like it though. Can I have it? Yeah. Just photograph it and send it to me. Okay. Because I want to um, share it with the world. It's my That's favorite nice. cartoon character. I wish I was a good at animating. You are. I'm not. I can't do animations. What have you sent to me? I've sent to you my gift to you. It's a movie. It's cage. it's an it's an ad for a new product that I think we should put on the merch store. The world's okayest mom. It's the world's okayest mom. She's just okay. She's not great or bad. She's the world's okayest mom. <laughs> That's great. That's a great thing. I like that you covered up Tootie's face yeah. with a dinosaur. Yeah. That's a good picture of her, too. She's going to like that. I hope she does. She really didn't like your gift last week. She, she said, didn't? So she said, that's really rude. <laughs> <laughs> the the possum she just heard it, off? No, she heard it. She heard it today. She said, wow, jeez. Too far. Too far. too far. Oh, no. This is now she's going to be real mad. <laughs> no, she didn't say too far. She thinks it's funny. She gets jokes. Um, yeah. So that's uh, that's uh, the thing. That's it, man. Yeah. Um, next, we did it. Next week, uh, mm-hmm. we're uh, going to do something special. I can't wait. We're going to check the Patreon. And for mm. you top tier Patreon subscribers, there's going to be a special invite link uh, for you guys. So pay attention. Be on the lookout. You will be welcome to be here in the audience. While yeah, we go. it's going to be weird. It's going to be weird. I don't know what it's going. I don't know it's, how it's going to work or what's going to happen. I think we'll be able to see stuff that you guys write. Think maybe. I don't know. But and we're, we're going to have a concept for it figured out by then. <laughs> and I will make a better gift than just a hand-drawn Why? Spookum Fritz. Because this, uh, it's no good. Why? It's, it's real good. good. I blew my nut making a video game last week, and uh, <laughs> it's going to take me a little that while. That video game is probably going to be the winner for a few weeks, I think. Ah. It can't. It, I think it kind of can. I think the like commercial it, wins this week, but we'll see what people say it's on domination. All right. Well, uh, I think that's it for us. I think um, you. Wait, which one of us eats shit and which one of us fucks ourselves? <sighs> you know what? Let's both eat a bunch of shit and fuck ourselves. Okay. Just this week, though. Just this next week. week. We'll figure we'll out. We'll split it up we'll for next week. We'll figure out a schedule. Okay. Good, 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 good. Is he she?